Hello friends, welcome to Pathological Concepts. Today we are going to discuss renal pathology and our focus will be on congenital anomalies along with morphology components. It includes the four basic components that are glomerulus, tubules, interstitium and blood vessels. We will also see the pathogenesis and the clinical correlation with various diseases. So let's get started with the congenital anomalies. Among congenital anomalies, first we will discuss renal agenesis. Now this renal agenesis, it may be bilateral or unilateral. The unilateral renal agenesis, the kidney undergo compensatory hypertrophy. Kidney undergoes compensatory hypertrophy and patient have adequate renal function and are generally asymptomatic whereas in bilateral renal agenesis it's incompatible with life and in USG we find oligohydramnios Moving ahead, we have Potter sequence. Now, what is this? In Potter sequence, there is renal agenesis. Leading to oligohydramnios. along with fetal compression and there is flattened faces and positional abnormality of limbs for example club foot now moving ahead we have second anomaly that is renal hypoplasia here the kidney fail to develop to normal weight third we have horse shoe kidney and here the most common attachment of kidney Occurs in the lower pole. Moving on next, we have abnormal location of kidney that is ectopic kidney and uh, it occurs in pelvic region, it is the most common abnormal location of the kidney so now we talk about the morphologic component of kidney to understand the pathophysiology to study renal diseases we divide kidney into four parts glomerulus tubules interstitium and blood vessels now glomerulus as we all know the glomerulus comprise of 
tuft of capillaries. This is the afferent and this is the efferent along with the parietal layer. It also have mesangium. Now we will look for the filtration barrier which is most important for regulating the normal function of the kidney. So let's have a look. I'm drawing it here. See this is the blood vessel. It rests on basement membrane. This is the basement membrane and we have visceral epithelial cells. This is visceral epithelial cells also known as podocyte. Now blood vessel here are fenestrated. The capillary is fenestrated and have a size of 70 to 100 nanometer. The basement membrane is further divided into three parts. The inner dense part is lamina densa. And the one close to blood vessel, this region, this region, it is lamina rara interna. And the one here, is known as lamina rara externa. So if you talk about normal thickness of basement membrane, it is 300 to 400 nanometer. Now, talking about visceral epithelial cells, also known as podocyte, they have got filtration slits. of the size 20 to 30 nanometer. So, and it is made up of various proteins. Uh, there is nephrin, podocene, CD2AP and actin fibers. So this is nephrine, this is podocene, this circle is CD2 associated protein and this is actin. So why it is important to know the various proteins because the mutation or genetic abnormality or any change in these protein causes disease in human except CD2AP which does not cause disease in human. So right now we saw the filtration membrane I am repeating it. The blood vessel comprising of endothelium resting on basement membrane which has got three layers lamina rara interna, lamina densa and externa. Its normal thickness is 300 to 400 nanometer and podocyte also known as visceral epithelial cells which, who, which has got filtration slate of 20 to 30 nanometer and made up of four proteins out of which three causes disease in human and CD2 associated protein does not cause disease in the human. 
Now moving ahead to pathology. How did the disease develop? So basically glomerular diseases are immunologically mediated and the tubular and interstitial diseases are caused by toxic or infectious disease infectious agents so moving ahead we have the pathogenesis antibody mediated cell mediated immunity or alternate pathway alternate complement pathway now to know about the complement pathway there is a lecture you can check the description below and go through the complement system so that you have better understanding of this now moving on to pathogenesis we'll talk about antibody mediated immunity so let's see how it occurs it's of two types in c2 immune complex are formed that is complexes are formed inside the glomerulus itself and circulating immune complex circulating immune complex now in this case the antigen antibody are formed in the circulation and gets deposited in the glomeruli and causing disease so in in situ condition again we have two things the antigen may be fixed or planted antigen and in fixed antigen we have non collagenous domain of basement membrane and the basement membrane consists of mainly collagen type 4 so the glomerular basement membrane collagen type 4 non collagenous domain which act as antigen here we also have phospholipase a2 receptor antigen and this is seen in case of membranous nephropathy and also there are mesangial antigen and other antigens moving on next we have circulating immune complex as we have seen it it can also have two types based on fixed uh, or planted antigen and uh, they may have exogenous or endogenous exogenous component caused by infection and endogenous because of the dna in case of sle there is very uh, less is known about the cell mediated immunity and in alternate complement pathway we have one important disease that is membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis type 2 also known as dense deposit disease now we will talk about the suppose this is the basement membrane so we'll talk about the two types of deposit we found found in kidney that is sub epithelial and sub endothelial suppose this is the basement membrane and here are the endothelial cells and below we have podocytes 
so if the deposition is present here between the endothelium and lamina rara internal basement membrane we say it is sub endothelial and if the deposit is here between lamina rara external basement membrane and podocyte it is known as sub epithelial now what's the significance of this is typically sub endothelial deposit we get in case of um acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and uh, sub epithelial we get in case of membranous nephropathy we can also have deposition in the mesangium we can also have mesangial deposition say here so mesangial deposition is seen in can be seen in case of ig and nephropathy now since we have got about the basic idea of the structures let's move ahead and see how the diagnosis is made so the diagnosis is made by renal biopsy and we'll look for the changes in light microscopy electron microscopy and in the immunofluorescence in light microscopy we look for the proliferation infection and we look for the proliferation also for the inflammation and the deposits for example amyloid and uh, we can also do a special stain here and one important stain we use for checking the basement membrane is pass staining for rdk acid shift we can also use mason trichrome and silver methanamine now moving ahead in electron microscopy we look for the deposition of immunoglobulins sorry in electron microscopy we basically look for the uh, basement membrane and look for the basement membrane uh, and uh, also the location of deposits whether it is sub epithelial or sub endothelial in a disease named suppose this is the basement membrane and these i have drawn the food processes of visceral epithelial cells we can see the effacement of food process effacement of food process and it is seen in minimal change disease seen in case of minimal change disease and this is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in child now moving ahead we talk about the clinical diagnosis clinically the glomerular diseases are divided into nephrotic and nephritic range as nephrotic syndrome and nephritic syndrome nephrotic syndrome is characterized by protein urea of more than 3.5 g per day this leads to hypo albuminemia 
that is less than 3, 3 gram per day protein. Generalized edema and lipid urea along with hyperlipidemia. And in case of nephritic syndrome, we have hypertension, hematuria, azotemia, and oliguria. We also have proteinuria, but it is less than 3.5 gram per day. And also, we see a new entity, azotemia, here. And what is this? The azotemia is defined as increase in blood urea nitrogen and creatinine. Now one more entity is there which is known as uremia. When azotemia is combined with clinical sign and symptom along with biochemistry abnormality or biochemical abnormality we say it's uremia and in case of uremia patient needs dialysis now moving ahead we will see the clinical correlation. So we talk about immune complex glomerulonephritis. See if this immune complex glomerulonephritis is seen with IgA deposition no no vasculitis sorry no vasculitis we are dealing with IgA nephropathy if IgA deposition along with vasculitis it is Henox Schlonin Purpura HSP third if we if we find SLE in the patient with immune complex deposition basically we are dealing with lupus nephritis suppose we find a acute infection of throat or skin and along with if we may find thick capillary wall or endocapillary hypercellularity We are dealing with acute post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Further, if we find sub epithelial deposit we are dealing with membranous nephropathy. Now, as we see these immune complex glomerulonephritis, in IF, immunofluorescence, all will have granular pattern. Granular pattern. Remember, this is very important because there are conditions in which we get linear pattern, which we will see. So, talking about linear pattern on I 
and the disease is anti-GBM. Anti-GBM disease, anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. Here we don't find no pulmonary hemorrhage. If the linear pattern on IF associated with immune complex deposition in the GBM, GBM deposit, you find immune complex deposit in the GBM along with pulmonary hemorrhage, we are dealing with good pasture syndrome. Moving on next, we have Anka associated glomerulonephritis and vasculitis. We will see and in this condition there is paucity of deposit on immunofluorescence. So we don't get either linear or gra granular pattern. Remember this. So if we find the features of say nephritic syndrome along with ANCA, it's antineutrophil cytoplasmic antibody in blood without lung hemorrhage. It is ANCA associated glomerulonephritis and if we found vasculitis without asthma or granuloma it is microscopic polyangitis In third case, if we get granuloma and no asthma is associated, we are dealing with Wegener's glomerulopathy. Lome Rulopathy and uh, if there is eosinophilia along with asthma along with granuloma we are dealing with Shrug Strauss syndrome So friends, hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.